In this section, we'll look at the final fall of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War during Bush's uh, presidency. But before I get to that, I should note that there was a significant event in the People's Republic of China in 1989, uh, in early June 1989. Mao Zedong, the Chinese Communist leader, died in 1976. And afterwards, they had begun sort of some economic liberalization. And uh, people began to press for political liberalization as well. And uh, what you end up having is a massive protest in Tiananmen Square. And the military was ordered in, about 300,000 people in martial law declared in Beijing. And they uh, ended up killing 700 people. They actually, the protesters actually put up a statue of the, you know, a copy of the Statue of Liberty. Anyway, they, uh, the tanks rolled in and famously one Chinese protester blocked them with just standing there bravely between them. But uh, it was, the, this protest was crushed and, uh, you know, the world was outraged. Anyway, turning to Europe in the fall of the Soviet Union, I should note first that in July 1989, the communist Polish government, which was still facing political unrest from the Solidarity Movement led by Lech Walesa, you can see him here, uh, agreed to semi-free elections for Parliament. And in this election, the Solidarity candidates won. And matter of fact, the following year, Walesa was elected president. Now, what was significant about this was that the Gorbachev and the Soviets did not intervene. Meanwhile, at the same time in Czechoslovakia, a protest had begun against the communist government there. Eventually, it became known as the Velvet Revolution. By 1990, the government had agreed to free multi-party elections, and in the end, the non-communist candidates won. Likewise, at about the same time, the government of Hungary allowed free elections in 1990. In other countries such as East Germany, Albania, Bulgaria, they even began political reforms. Once again, the key thing here is that Gorbachev and the Soviet Union, 1989-1990, did not intervene. They let this go forth. And it's like this, this, this sort of political movement gained steam across several European nations. And this sort of culminated in November 1989, when uh, people began to uh, chip away at the Berlin Wall and East Germany refused to block it. And so uh, crowds formed and it was on television and the fall of the Berlin Wall, free passage between East and West Germany, uh, that sort of became a symbol of the end of the Cold War. I should note that many foreign, far, foreign policy hardliners, they criticized Bush for not more actively assisting these political revolutions. In retrospect, most experts think Bush was wise not to become more involved because it might have provoked a harsher backlash. No one Bush knew could say that the Americans instigated the unrest, which would undermine the movements. It was probably a smart thing to do. By 1991, the Baltic states uh, had uh, declared their independence. And uh, they declared it from the Soviet Union. And in June 1991, Russian nationalists declared their own sovereignty. As uh, Gorbachev began to negotiate with the various Soviet republics, hardline communists were upset that he had not cracked down on the Eastern European reforms, and he was apparently willing to allow further political reforms throughout all the Soviet republics. And so they were upset, and they staged a coup in August 1991. Gorbachev flew to Moscow and was detained. You can see him landing in a plane, and on the right here, a picture of him uh, when he was detained. The public, however, didn't support the coup. And the military just wouldn't wouldn't end up crushing the protesters, and so the coup was an obvious failure. Gorbachev was released, and uh, the a Russian nationalist leader named Boris Yeltsin, shown above here on the left, led a counter coup, and he climbed atop a Soviet tank, and the Moscow he declared control of Russia, the nation of Russia. In uh, some, therefore, in 1991. The Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, the Soviet Union, ceased to exist, which was uh, just an impossibility, people assumed, not long before. Nine of the former Soviet republics, which are now independent, formed a loose union to encourage cooperation known as the Commonwealth of Independent States. But the reality was the Cold War had ended, and a new world order now existed. So I guess the key question is, why did the Soviet Union fall and the Cold War end? A uh, number of reasons, and you can see them here. 
the communist economy didn't adequately reward individual initiative and hard work. And as a result, a slumping economy resulted in, in that, it, you know, there's low productivity and eroding standards of living and acute shortages of food and people just had had enough. Moreover, the information revolution, the computers and technology and so forth that the West had had, would, you know, really put the Soviets at a distinct advantage. And it sort of, people were aware of that discrepancy and that it sort of undermined the credibility of the Soviet system. You can say Gorbachev's perestroika and glasnost, moreover, opened Soviet citizens' eyes to these gross disparities. They, they became more aware of it. And also... Uh, you can't deny the growing national sentiments among the various Soviet republics and all the ethnic groups sort of wanted their own independence in the Soviet Union. When Gorbachev didn't intervene in the Eastern European uh, protests, like I mentioned earlier, people assumed that the Soviet leaders would not harshly react to the popular risings in their own country, so that sort of generated them. I should note, concluding, that some, uh, certainly conservatives, suggest that the American buildup of defense spending during the Reagan years strained the economy of the Soviet Union more than it did the United States. In this argument, the Soviets felt a need to spend dollar for dollar what the Americans spent. But see, the Soviets had a much smaller gross national product. And this meant that as they matched America for dollar for dollar, you know, they had less, even less money to spend on their own domestic consumption for their own people. The, uh, the arms race, you know, hurt the American debt, but it really crushed the Soviet economy. A lot of conservatives argue that Reagan intended this, but if this were the case, he wouldn't have signed the INF Treaty. In any event, it was complex. And, uh, you know, this kind of happened suddenly, and the end of the Soviet Union, the end of the Cold War, was a, a significant event in world history. This, this, therefore, concludes the section on the fall of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War.